Hi, I'm Saud Alam, a web and data scientist of the Wayback Machine at the Internet Archive. On behalf of the Wayback Machine team, I'm presenting video archiving and playback in the Wayback Machine. Some web pages embed videos using HTML5 video tag. They use source attribute pointing to static video files. Archiving such pages and their embedded videos is easy. And it can be done using traditional uh, archiving methods, like we archive embedded images. However, some larger scale video uh, hosting sites like YouTube, they use a more complex approach. They leverage their custom video player with dynamically changing video stream. Each stream points to different uh, quality and encoding. And things can change depending on the network condition, user preferences, and various other reasons. In addition to that, these URLs are not stable. They often change over time. So archiving such pages and their embedded videos is challenging. And it requires a specialized solution both for archiving and replay. At the Internet Archive, for video archiving, we have a pipeline of processes. First, we identify candidate videos and pages that contain those videos. Then we check the status of those videos, whether we have already archived them. We fetch corresponding metadata. And based on that metadata, we filter for curation. And finally, if all the boxes check, then we archive those videos and corresponding uh, resources. So let's walk you through these processes one at a time. Wayback Machine receives data from many different sources. Some of these sources provide us with work files while others just provide a feed of URLs, which we then go ahead and archive them. Of the sources that provide us with a feed of URLs, we uh, match certain patterns to identify URLs that might contain videos in those pages. Such URLs are then processed in a separate pipeline using different methods. And for that, we first check each video for its status in our HTTP API that is built for video status. It serves as a scene check service and it provides useful information such as date time when the video was first archived and which source triggered that archiving activity. We ignore the video URI if it is already archived. Otherwise, if we do end up archiving the video, we update the database. We have a custom metadata API for videos, which tells us a lot about the video and its attribute. Uh, this Custom HTTP video metadata API that we built is a wrapper around YouTube deal, which means it supports all the uh, video services that YouTube deal supports. So we extract fields like title, description, duration, um, uh, uploaders and channel, captions, which categories the video belongs to, whether it is available publicly or it's a private video. And many different formats the video is available, um, subtitles, tags, thumbnails, and many, many more metadata attributes. With this metadata in hand, we can then apply some curation. For example, check if the video falls under our exclusions list, if the video category is something that we do not want to archive, if there are certain keywords and tags that we want to avoid. Uh, are there channels and uploaders 
uh, that, we, that we want to not archive on. File size, duration, and many other uh, uh, statistical um, uh, information from this metadata that we can use uh, to build heuristics to identify which ones to archive and which ones not. After applying these curation filters, if we identify that we do want to archive this video, then we first archive the container HTML web page. And we archive all the page requisites like CSS, JavaScript, images, fonts, and whatnot. Then we also archive uh, video metadata, uh, the API response that we got. We save it in another work record. And we archive at least one video file. As we said before, uh, some of these sites will have videos in multiple formats. And we get all a list of those in the metadata. And we select the one with suitable size, size and um, uh, better um, support in clients. Then we also archive various thumbnail CSS sprites that are present in the metadata API. These thumbnails are used uh, when uh, users scrub through the timeline of the player. However, we also see an opportunity of these thumbnails being used in the future for uh, machine learning purposes to classify videos based on these sample thumbnails. We also archive captions in many different languages. Uh, the metadata API returns a list of URLs of captions. We go through those URLs and archive them all. We also anticipate um, usage of these captions in the future for um, Im implementing better search in videos and also for some other machine learning tasks for researchers. Once the video is archived and indexed, um, if the users try to replay it, on those pages, we replace the, the built-in uh, video player with JW player instance that we have customized to meet our own needs. We use it because um, that way we can control the playback better and establish association of video page to its corresponding video that we have archived. And to build that association, uh, the player queries a key value database that we have, which tells for a given video ID, what is the URL of the video file itself that we have archived that was extracted from the metadata. Uh, another thing to, to note here is the, the URL that we received for a specific format, that URL may not contain the video ID itself. And for that, we actually modify the URL and add the video ID as a query parameter so that we can later build these associations. But this is a work in progress. Uh, we are not happy with our current solution of having a separate key value database uh, for um, these associations. And we are working towards making it more portable and perhaps leveraging WARC files and CDS indexes themselves for this. We also understand that our policy of one capture per video may cause temporal violations because over time, some videos will be deleted or updated, but we only archive one video for the entire history of all those mementos for a given URL. Old flash videos may require emulation or migration, but we are currently focusing on more modern videos. The metadata that we received is stored in work records. However, we want to see and learn what we have archived on a daily basis. So for that, we go through newly created work files every hour and iterate over work records of metadata type with a very specific content type. 
in which we have stored the, uh, the metadata of videos. And for each record that we extract from there, we fix it first. For example, language information is generally not available. So we try to detect the language based on title. And if the language is anything but English, then we move on. Otherwise, we try to combine title and description together and detect the language again. We use this two-tier approach for uh, more better accuracy because descriptions tend to be noisy and often return English if you combine them. Um, however, titles are small, so relying on title alone can yield um, nothing often. With these uh, attributes fixed, um, we then iterate over those records and we only extract out metadata fields that are suitable for statistical analysis. And we take those attributes, ignore everything else, and then dump one line per record in a JSON-L format. These files are created every hour and they are preserved in daily data box items. Uh, with this record available, we then feed them into a dashboard that we have built to gain insights in our video archiving practices. For example, when we select the date uh, Feb 24, 2022, we learned that we have archived about 30,000 videos that day. And that was 700 videos more than the day before. We also learned that uh, the day was full of videos related to news, Putin, Ukraine, Russia, COVID-19, protests, Afghanistan, Pakistan. Uh, this gives us confidence um, and understanding of what we are archiving. Otherwise, the system was rather opaque. The dashboard, in addition to giving lexical insights, it also gives a temporal insight. For example, uh, after putting it in place, we learned that the longest videos could be as long as 24 hours, and we were archiving many such videos. We learned that less than 20% of the longest videos acquire more than 80% of the total daily duration. This is problematic because um, um, we could cut down on some of the long videos. Instead, we archive many, many more short or medium duration videos using the same amount of storage resources. So the system helped us a lot in improving our practices. It helps us as a feedback loop. And with that, I'll summarize the talk. So we are archiving videos at a larger scale. We are preserving rich metadata and provenance for research and insights, both for internal use and in the future for researchers. We are learning and improving our system and practices as we go. We are exploring opportunities of interoperability and standardization. And we are planning to open source our tools as they become generalizable. With that, uh, I'll see you in QA. Thank you.